I did a series of episodes on PayPal starting in episode 141, but one topic I have yet to cover is how to handle recurring billing with PayPal, so let's see what's involved in adding it to an existing application here. Now the application we'll be working with here is this one right here that I created in the previous episode, which sells llama kisses. And as you can see, I have various plans that have a recurring monthly subscription. And if I try to sign up here, I have to enter my credit card information. That's the only way I can sign up. Now what I find is that there are customers who prefer paying over PayPal instead of entering their credit card directly like this. Either they just don't have a credit card, or maybe they're international and they have some hefty credit card fees, or they just don't trust your application with their credit card information. So here, let's see what's involved in adding a PayPal checkout option. Now PayPal can be a bit intimidating because there are so many different services it provides in each one with its own strange name. This page, for example, here shows you six different ways you can handle recurring payments through PayPal. Well, if you're already accepting credit cards and just want to supply PayPal as an alternative payment method, then Express Checkout is likely the way you want to go, and that's what I'll be covering here. And so the next question is, how do we integrate Express Checkout into our application? Well, in the past I've shown how to do this using Active Merchant, but Active Merchant is a bit heavy for just adding simple PayPal integration, and it also does not support PayPal recurring payments. Now there are some forks of Active Merchant which do support this, but that's a mess that I'd rather not get into. Now another option is to communicate with the PayPal API directly. And if you go this route, I recommend checking out the name value pair API PDF, which I'll link to in the show notes. This has a section on the Express Checkout API, which is a good place to start. Now what's nice about this is that your application doesn't have any other dependencies, but it's still quite a bit of work. However, the solution I will be using in this episode is this little known gem called PayPal Recurring by Nando Vieira. This uses that same name value pair API I showed you earlier, but gives you a nice Ruby interface for interacting with it. Now also, I find the source code for this gem easy to read and well documented, so if you have any questions on exactly how it works underneath, just check out the source code. Let's get started by adding this gem to our gem file called PayPal Recurring, and then run the bundle command to install it. Next, I'll make an initializer under the config initializers directory here and call it paypal.rb. And then in here, I can call paypal recurring and then pass in configure. And that takes a config block where you can set the sandbox to true so that it knows we're not, we're, we're not in live mode. And there are uh, several other options that we want to pass in here, such as our username, but we'll need to get those from the paypal sandbox. Now you can set up your sandbox account by going to developer.paypal.com and clicking sign up now if you don't already have an account. Now I've already set one up, so I will just log in here with my email address and password. And the next step is to create a couple test accounts. Once you log in, you could just create a pre-configured account here. So I'll first create a buyer account here and I'll name it buyer at railscast.com. Make sure to store the password so you can access it later and we'll give him a lot of money here. Just like that, and then create account. So now that we have a buyer account, let's also make a seller by clicking on a new test account pre-configured. Let's give him Website Payments Pro and call it seller at railscast.com, copy the password, and that's it. So now we have our seller account and buyer account, and notice that each one has its own unique login email. However, that this is not the username that you enter in to PayPal Recurring. To get that, you have to go to API Credentials. And so here's the information you need to enter into the PayPal Recurring gem. So we've got the username, password, and the signature. So I will just paste these details into our PayPal Recurring configure block here with our username, password, and signature. Now you'll probably want to add this file to your .gitignore file because it has some sensitive info and you also don't want these same settings on your production server. Now there are a couple of ways that you can add Express Checkout to your application. One is to use their checkout button. Another is to use uh, radio buttons and have one being PayPal. I'm actually going to use a combination of these two approaches. So to accomplish this, I'm going to add some code near the top of our new subscription form here. So here's what it will do. It will offer two radio buttons with some images for the various credit cards or they can choose to do PayPal. If they choose PayPal, then I want to show the PayPal button, their checkout button that they provide, which is currently invisible. 
And when they do select PayPal, I want to hide all the other fields. So I need to wrap this in a div tag. Let's make it an ID, say uh, billing fields, so that when they do select PayPal, I can hide these fields, just like that. Now you can see what it looks like if I reload this signup form here. I can now choose between credit cards or PayPal. And what I want to happen is when someone selects PayPal, that it shows that PayPal checkout button here. Now there's already some coffee script that I wrote in the previous episode related to the new subscription form. And if you check this out right here, when the DOM is loaded, I call this setup form function, which is right here. So I'm going to add a bit of code right in here to handle the behavior of when the user clicks the payment method. So if they select the PayPal method, it's going to show the PayPal checkout, but hide the billing fields and vice versa when they click on the card method. So now you can see this in action here. When I click on the PayPal payment option, you can see I get my PayPal checkout button. Click back on the cards, I get my credit card form. Awesome. But the PayPal checkout isn't linked to anything yet. So where I'm displaying the checkout button here, I'm just going to add a link to call here. So I link to that image and let's pass it to a path called PayPal checkout path, which I have yet to create. And we also need to pass any other additional details in here, such as the plan that I'm passing in here. Um, I'll do these subscriptions, plan ID. That way I can reference that later on too. So inside of my routes file, I can add that PayPal checkout path. And I'm just going to send this off to the subscriptions controller. Add an, an action on there called PayPal checkout. That way all the checkout behavior is all in the same place. And also notice I'm not making this a named route specifically because Rails will actually do that automatically for me based off of the path I set here. So it already handles the PayPal checkout path uh, named route here. And then inside of the subscriptions controller, I can add that PayPal checkout action. And I'll just first fetch the plan, which is based off of the plan ID parameter that was passed in through there. And then we can create a new PayPal recurring object and pass in a few variables into here. So this is what the PayPal recurring gem provides. And one option here will be the return URL, which will be the URL the user come, goes to after they sign in through PayPal. And let's make that the new subscription URL and pass in our plan ID as the plan we have here. And then we have our cancel URL, which will just be the root URL. And then we have the description, which I'm just going to put in the plan name. And then we have the amount, I'll put in the plan price. And then we have the currency, which will ju just be US dollars. And then I can call checkout on this PayPal re recurring object. And that will actually trigger the PayPal API and return a response. So I can see if the response is valid. If the response is valid, then I want to redirect to the, the response checkout URL. So that's going to be the PayPal URL where the user can sign in. And if it's invalid, let's just raise the response errors and inspect on that just to see uh, what's happening. So there we go. That's what's involved in preparing a PayPal checkout. Let's see if it works. So now when I go to the subscription page and click on PayPal option here, I get my checkout button. When I click it, if everything works, I should get our signup form for PayPal. And it looked like that worked. So as you can see here, I've got my product description and I might want to include a little bit more information in here, such as the pricing. And I can enter in my login information for the buyer test account that I set up earlier. So here's the email address and I'll just paste in the password and log in. Let's see if that works. And that takes me to a PayPal review page where I can review how I'm paying for it and agree to it. And then that hopefully will take me to the new subscription page. And it worked. So this is where the user would complete their subscription. And I'll need to make this look more like a confirmation page. But as you can see here, I have a couple of variables in the URL token and payer ID. And so I'll need to use these for my subscription to finish the payment for PayPal. Let's first focus on storing those extra parameters in our subscription model when we build it inside of the new action here. So let's first check if the payer ID parameter exists. And if it does, let's set the subscription, um, let's say a PayPal customer token to that payer ID. And we also want to set the temporary token, which is the PayPal, uh, let's call it payment token, 
to the token which is passed in. So that way those variables will be stored. Now since that PayPal payment token is temporary, let's just add it as a virtual attribute on our subscription model. I'll add it to our adder accessory line here where I just have PayPal payment token. So that way we can uh, access it. Now the other parameter that's passed in, what I'm calling the PayPal customer token is more permanent. So let's add a column for that. I'll generate a migration and we'll add uh, PayPal to subscriptions. And so let's add that PayPal customer token column on there and it'll be a string column. Now while we're here, there is one other token that we'll need to store by PayPal. I'm going to call it PayPal recurring profile token. Make that a string value as well. So we'll need to store that later on. And then migrate the database to add the columns. So now these two parameters will be stored on our subscription model, but we still need to pass them through the form when our subscription is being created. So inside of our form here, let's just add a couple more hidden fields. Uh, one for the PayPal customer token, and then another for the PayPal um, payment token, so that they will be passed in through the form. Now while we're in this form, we also need to hide the credit card fields while the user is using PayPal because the credit card fields are showing up right here. Now I already have some of this functionality built in from the last episode where I check if they already have a Stripe card token and if they do, it's going to tell them that the credit card has already been provided. So I can sort of hop onto this functionality here and also check if they have the PayPal payment token present. And if they do, let's say that the payment has been provided to make it a little bit more generic. And I can also expand on this message a bit so it's a bit more clear on what the user has to do next. So I can say click on subscribe to complete the subscription. And now you can see when I reload this page here, the credit card fields disappear and my message is in its place. Now I also want to hide the payment method type selection up here as well. So now I need to perform the same if condition up there as well, but let's first make this a bit cleaner and by moving this logic into the model. So let's make a method called payment provided to check for this. And then in our subscription model, we can make that payment provided method and then just do the exact same behavior that we did in the view, but this time just directly inside of our model, much cleaner. So back in the view, let's use this new method here to hide our payment selection field here. So let's say, unless the subscription payment has been provided, we'll show that. So that way they won't show up when we've already provided our payment, whether it be through the credit card or PayPal. So now when we reload the page again, you can see that our payment selection area disappears. And now all we have to do is enter in our email address and then click subscribe to finish the subscription. But really we shouldn't have to really enter in our email address either because we can gather that information from PayPal. So inside of the controller new action here, let's supply a default email address for our subscription. So let's gather that information from PayPal. So to send a request to PayPal, we can call PayPal recurring gem, call new here and then pass in our token parameter that we get in here and we want to call uh, checkout details. And then we can call email on here to return the email address for the PayPal account. Now when we hit reload, it's going to make a request to PayPal and then it should supply our email address and it does, there it works. Now the final step is when the user clicks on subscribe that it actually handles the payment processing because so far no actual payment has been made. The user has only authorized the payment we actually have to make a call to handle the payment. Now, as you can see, I already have a save with payment method inside of my subscription model, which handles the payment of the credit card using Stripe. Now, what I would like to do is also support PayPal in the same method, but I'm just going to rename this to save with Stripe payment because this is all mostly a Stripe related payments. So I can make a more generic save with payment method, which handles the case for PayPal too. Now let me first move this validation part into here because I would like to handle validation in the PayPal version as well. So now we can make this uh, an FL statement here and say if the PayPal payment token is present, then we want to handle payments with uh, PayPal. Otherwise, let's fall back to save with Stripe payment. So this way it will alternate depending on which kind of payment the user is using. 
So now we just have to define the save with PayPal payment method, just like that. Now there are two things that need to happen here in order to make a recurring payment with PayPal. First, we need to request the pay payment and that will be the first payment. And then next we need to make a recurring profile so that it will continue to request the payments each month. Now in order to accomplish just the first item here, it would look something like this, where we make a PayPal recurring object, pass in some details such as our token and our payer ID, which is our customer token, and our description and amount to match our plans, and then we request the payment and then raise if there are any errors. Now this is looking a lot like what we made in the controller over here, where we have the PayPal checkout call and then make our recurring object here with the description and amount and so on. And in fact, it's important that this information matches up with the description and amount. So what we would want to do is probably refactor this out into its own model so that we're not having PayPal recurring objects spread across both our subscription uh, model and controller over here. So let's make a new model over here. Let's call it PayPal payment.rb. And so we'll want a class in here called PayPal payment. And let's pass the subscription in to the initialize method and store that in an instance variable because that's mostly the object we'll be working off of here. Now, some of you may be wondering, shouldn't this class go in the lib directory instead of inside of our models directory because this isn't an active record model? Well, models don't always have to inherit from active record. And a good question to ask yourself is, does this contain logic specific to my application? And a good check is to see if you have are working with any objects which are specific to your app. In this case, we're working with our subscription object. So this logic really should go inside of my models directory here. All right, now time for some major refactoring. I'll go pretty quick here, but in the end, we should have much cleaner code with most of the PayPal specific logic in this class here. So let's start in our subscription model. So first I'll extract all this logic out here into the PayPal payment class. And I wanna instantiate that and pass in self to that. And then I can just make a, let's call it make recurring method on there. And so I'll make that method here, make recurring, and just toss all that logic into here. So I'll need to go through our subscription class here to gather some of this information. And such as our plan, name and price, there we go. And I'll handle this a little bit better later. And also inside of my subscription model, I'm going to extract this out as well and make a nice little method called PayPal so that it's easier to access the PayPal payment instance here. So now anywhere in my controller, I can extract out anywhere I'm calling PayPal recurring and move that into my PayPal payment class. So let's move all this into a call to subscription PayPal and I'll make a method on there called checkout details and then we can access the email through that. So inside of my PayPal payment class, I'll make that checkout details method and just do the same thing in here. And I'll need to call checkout details on here as well. But notice that I'm passing in a params here, but I don't really need to use this because I can use the subscription uh, PayPal payment token in here instead. Now I'm already starting to see some duplication here between these two methods, but before I try to refactor that out, it's a good idea to get all of your mess into one location and then clean it up. So let's go back to our controller here and then go down to the PayPal checkout action down here. And I would like to extract pretty much all of this out, at least as much as I can, into that PayPal payment class. But I also need some kind of subscription record to access it through. So let's call, um, let's first make a subscription by calling plan.subscriptions.build. And then we can call the subscription PayPal, uh, let's make a method called checkout URL because that's really all the information I need in the controller here. And let's redirect to that checkout URL. Now I might not be able to get it this clean, but let's give it a try. So back inside of the PayPal payment class, I'll make a method on here called checkout URL and just paste in the code from the controller. Now there are a couple of methods in here that there's no way that I could access them, such as the new subscription URL and the root URL. So let's move these two options back up into my controller. So I'll make a little options hash onto here. And then back in my controller, I'll just pass these options back in through here, just like that. All right, so now everything is inside of our PayPal payment class and it's quite a bit of a mess. So let's start cleaning this up, uh, starting with the checkout URL method here. 
what I'd want to do is make a method called uh, process. And that can take a, an action such as checkout, which will be the action that will be performed on our PayPal recurring object. And then we can just pass any other options we have. And then we can just, uh, this will return a response, which we can call something like checkout URL on. So that way, it'll refactor all of this out into that. And this means our checkout details method would be as simple as process checkout details. That's it. And the make recurring method would also be very simple where I'm calling just request payment on our PayPal recurring object. So it could just be process request payment. So now let's make that magical process method. I'm going to make it a private method in here called process. It takes an action and some options here. And in here, I'll just do what I did in that make recurring method because it has pretty much all the functionality we need. And I'll just call send instead of request payment, I'll call send and then perform the action which I have passed in here. So that gets performed on our PayPal recurring object. And as for these options here, let's just pass in our options hash and I'm going to add to it the default options here. And actually I'm just going to call reverse merge so that way it um, does not override whatever you pass in the options hash, so the options hash takes precedence. And then we just have to return our response object. And I'll do a bit more cleanup here. This can probably just be merged onto this one line. And let's make this one line as well. Just like that. And then that's it. That looks pretty good. Now, even though we are supplying sometimes more information than we need for certain PayPal actions, that's all right because the recurring gem will just filter out and only select the items which are applied to that given action. All right, so now that we're done with that giant refactoring, we can focus again on this make recurring method because we still need to complete the second part here, which is making the recurring profile. And thanks to the refactoring, this will be an easy addition. All we need to do is call process with a call to create recurring profile. And then we need to pass in some additional options in here as well. We need to set the period to monthly and the frequency to one that just tells it how many um, billing periods make up a billing cycle. And our start at time, we'll set it to time zone now. And there we go. So now we have a recurring profile. Now, if you're ever curious on what options you can pass into the PayPal recurring gem and what exactly they do, just check out the source code because as you can see, they're nicely laid out here for us. And you can see one uh, option maps into the option name of the, pay, uh, the name value pair API that PayPal provides. So you can use that PDF that I mentioned earlier and just kind of match them up and check out the documentation through there. Now I still need to finish up this save with PayPal payment method inside of my subscription model because I'm not storing the profile ID that PayPal returns after I make the recurring profile. So the way this works is this will return a response after I call make recurring on my PayPal payment object. And this response object contains an attribute called profile ID. And we need to store this in the database. Now, if you recall, I already created a uh, column in the database when I made the migration called PayPal recurring profile token. And then I could just set it to that and then save my model and then it'll save our profile. And that's it. Now we have a recurring PayPal payment setup. Let's try it out. I'll start at the beginning so we can see the entire process. Let's go all out and choose the I'm in heaven plan. And we'll select PayPal, check out with PayPal, then enter in the buyer password, log in here, and then confirm our payment details and agree, and then finish up our subscription. And it worked, we now have a new subscription through PayPal, yay! So that's it for this episode on adding a PayPal checkout option to our subscription form here. But this episode turned out quite a bit longer than I anticipated, so don't expect future episodes to be quite this long. But even at this length, it's still not feature complete because we need to handle cases where the customer has insufficient funds or maybe they cancel their subscription. I will consider covering those topics in a future episode, but I first want to see the feedback of this episode here. Well, that's it. I'll see you next week.